Longstone and Mortison Common have intriguing traces of the past which include Neolithic stunning stones, Bronze Age barrier mold and an Iron Age enclosure. Trekking through the woods on a muddy footpath leading to the Mortison Common one needs to have the right pair of shoes as this can be slippery on a wet day. At the top of the hill a uh, historic long stone at Mortison at Brightstone Down, the only megalithic monument on the Isle of Wight. These are 600 years old. The history of the long stone is shrouded on mystery and myth. It's thought to be the remains of a burial place with two large stones at its entrance. It's an incredible sight seeing the Neolithic stunning stones and one can appreciate the long stone cottage built in the early 1900s. The winds are blowing fiercely however they're not going to put me off exploring this fascinating part of the Isle of Wight. Walking up Castle Hill and Mortison Common Second Summit is a bit of a challenge. It has the remains of an iron enclosure which is a low rectangular bank. Views Brystone Bay on the south coast of Isle of Wight from Castle Hill on Mortison Common are superb. You can appreciate the calm sea in the distance and the magnificent landscape on the foothills of the surrounding countryside. Fiercely, and it's a struggle to hear my voice, but I have to continue. Walking to the west and looking westward on Mortison Down are the Tyneson Down chalk cliffs in a distance, combined together with the picturesque views and meandering paths, are the quintessential ingredients for walking and hiking trails. After exploring the Longstone and the Downs, it was pleasant to enjoy a stroll around the Mortison Manor. I would not like to borrow the phrase, save the best till last, but I'm nearly tempted. If you have a deep passion for flowers, this is your idyllic place. Mortison Manor was first mentioned in the Doomsday Book of 1086, but the present house was built in the 1500s. It's the ancestral home of the Sealy family. The gardens surrounding the manor are open from mid-March to end of October. The formal garden was originally terraced by Sir John and Lady Nicholson in 1960s. Influenced by Lady Nicholson's Sicilian upbringing. The garden is constantly changing and affords a surprising mix of plantic styles ranging from the Mediterranean to a traditional tea garden. Mortison is the National Trust most southerly dry garden. The Isle of Wight has a warmer, drier climate than many other parts of the United Kingdom and it has a longer growing season. The garden's sandy soils drains quickly so even in very wet weather 
it soon dries out. Walking towards the rose garden on the right, there is a small cafe to the left where you can have some refreshments. The rose gardens were created in 2004 and contain some of Sir John's favourite roses. As roses don't like sandy soils, the beds were replaced with heavier loam to aid water retention. There are a wide variety of flowers with striking colours which are a treat for the eyes. I noticed a team of hard-working men and women attending to the gardens, working tirelessly to maintain them. Apologies, the hard-working team of men and women from the National Trust were edited from the video. The scent from the flowers is amazing and of course you appreciate the bees doing what they do best, pollinating the flowers. It's just amazing. Detailed history of the Mortison Estates goes back to before 1300 when the chick became the lords of the manor. The chick lived at Mortison until 1621 and the Sealy family purchased the house in 1861. I've enjoyed my trip around the Longstone and the Mortison and I would encourage you to visit the Longstone and Mortison if you had a chance to visit the Isle of Wight. I think it is time well spent. I'll leave you with a near area view of the manor house until next time.